I just rounded up all the ingredients for a perfect corn chowder. It's winter, it's cold. We want that warm, beautiful soup, and that's what this corn and sausage and potatoes are gonna come together to create. You round up these ingredients too so we can make this together. Let's go. A corn chowder soup is really honestly pretty easy. It's a chowder, so we are gonna have some potatoes, but what we're gonna focus on is the corn. Now I'm using my home growing frozen sweet corn. You can use canned sweet corn, purchased frozen sweet corn. Now, there are two types of corn chowder. There is one that you're gonna make fresh when sweet corn is in season, and you're going to use the cobs to really exude even more flavor. And then there's the one you're gonna make in the middle of winter because you wanna enjoy the flavor and a good soup, so you're gonna use something like just ready to go corn. So what I have though is a good Italian sausage to start. Italian sausage has those seasonings in it, has all that wonderful, you know, basil and parsley and garlic. And it's a nice way just to add flavor right into the beginning. So what I'm gonna do here is just put it right into my stock pot. This is where we're gonna make everything. We're gonna make the whole soup in here. I'm gonna break this up into small pieces and let it brown. And we wanna render that fat out and use it for flavor. The sausage has been browning, and I like when it even starts getting a little nice kind of some crusted brown bits on it and kind of gets a little bit of fond on the bottom of the pan. That to me is beautiful, but what you're gonna notice is it's rendering out some of that sausage, that beautiful fat that's in the meat, which sausage should have a ratio of fat to meat. And you know a good sausage when you see still the colors and pieces of herbs that are in there. So you see the green, you see some of the beautiful like spices that are in there. I want that, because that's flavor. So what I'm gonna do is actually cook now our vegetable base in that. So I wanted to brown the meat, get out some of that fat, and now we're gonna cook that. So I have some celery going, and I'm just breaking it down into a little bit smaller pieces. Now I'm not someone, I will admit, I don't mind saying this about myself, I don't love raw celery, but I like it in things. I like it cooked, and I like it to be about the same size as any other vegetable I'm gonna put in. So I broke these celery down, and you can see how easy it is then just to go through and give them a nice chop. So what we're doing here is gonna build flavor we have the sausage, we have that rendered fat now to cook this in, but we're gonna build that further by these vegetables. So we have onion, celery, and some red pepper. I like the mixture of those together. And I think the red pepper, honestly, it adds good color. I think sometimes we eat with our eyes too, and having that color is important. So what I'm gonna do is start putting these in. I'm gonna let them saute in that fat that was created from that sausage. That mixture of the vegetables now is getting softened and nice and sauteed. So what I'm doing is just finishing up getting my potatoes ready. So the potatoes are gonna do two things. One, they're just adding a nice texture heft to the soup. You know, they're a nice hearty thing to use. We're not doing too many, but what I am also gonna do with this last one that I'm peeling here is I'm gonna cut it slightly different so I can easily remove it and blend it so we can get the right kind of texture and viscosity in our soup. So what I'm gonna only do with this is just kind of do it in some nice strips this is gonna be easy for me then to fish out of the actual mixture and know I'm gonna blend it with everything else with some corn to actually get a nice, beautiful mouthfeel. And I know that sounds kind of odd, but what that does is instead of thickening it with a flour or with something, what we're gonna do is thicken it with some of the corn over here. So you can see we have quite a bit of corn. Some of that is gonna go in here right now. About, I'm gonna do half of our corn. And I'm just going to eyeball that and put it right in so your corn may look different if you use canned from the store or whatever you have. What I'm gonna do now, see how this is just looking beautiful and rich and hearty. We're gonna make sure to salt it well, because at this point, we're gonna make sure that we start seasoning every layer, put in some pepper, and now I'm gonna put in my stock. So I'm using a chicken stock, and what I'm gonna do is just make sure to put it in here, and this is going to start the process of cooking these potatoes, of starting to really build the soup, and then we will finish by blending that milk with some potato and corn to have that final layer of flavor. As it's coming to a simmer, I'm gonna put in some herbs, just a nice spray of thyme, let it whole, you can pull it out later, and some bay leaves. Again, they can be easily pulled out. We're just gonna put them right on top. We're gonna to cover, let it simmer until the potatoes are just beginning to tenderize. This has been simmering away, and you just wanna do it until the potatoes are tender. Now, what I'm doing, notice why I cut this one potato slightly different. Look how easy this is just to find the pieces and pull it out. Now, how do you know when a potato is done? You take your knife and you just insert it until it's no resistance, like that's perfect. So what I wanna make sure is I get all those pieces like that out, but I think, in my head, I feel like there's one more, but there's not, they're perfect. So what we're gonna do is just let this, there it is, I knew it, I knew there was one more. Um, what we're gonna do is let this kind of just sit. It can continue to simmer, that's just fine. And this is when we add 
a lot more corn flavor and the perfect texture. So we have these potatoes down in here. We're gonna add the rest of the corn on top. Mine was frozen, so any of that residual juice, corn milk should we call it, that's coming from that is gonna be put right with it. And this is all gonna get blended together. So we're gonna add some milk right on top so it adds a little bit of richness. We're just gonna pour it in. And what this is gonna do is have so much texture and flavor that I think is just impossible to get otherwise. So I'm gonna start blending it and then just go until it's smooth. So after it is pretty much smooth, you just wanna take it out. And obviously there's gonna be a little texture to it. That's just fine. But this is to me where it turns into more of a chowder is because we have that more cream base in there now with the milk and everything. So I'm gonna do is pour it back on, turn the heat up a little bit, and let it cook. I want it to warm through, want everything to come together, but look at the instant change that we are getting from this. We're getting a beautiful creamy soup without any cream. It's just milk and that potato and the corn. So we're gonna stir this together, let it cook a little bit and serve it up. I'm bringing the soup over. I let it come back to a simmer just to make sure it's warmed through. It's a beautiful soup. And what I do wanna do is make sure I pull out now that thyme sprig we put in there. It did all of its work. A lot of the leaves actually came off, which is perfect. You wanna watch for the bay leaves too. And you can take those out as you find them, which right there, look at that beautiful bay leaf. It exuded all that flavor. So this is a beautiful, rich, kind of hearty soup. What I like is it has just to me the perfect texture of a mix of kind of brothy, but then creamy too, since we blended all that together. But look, you get that red pepper right in there. Look at all the pieces of things you get. That's what I really like about this soup, is it has a nice kind of like amount of heft to it and still is really cozy. So what you can do, you can kind of make it your own. I think personally, a little bit of parsley on there is really nice. Do you have to? No, but I think a little bit of fresh green adds a little kind of pop of flavor at the end. So a little bit of that on top, I personally like. You can do some shredded cheese if you want on top. Kind of anything that's just gonna be something that your family's gonna love. Kind of customize it and make it your own. That's the beauty of a soup. And then you can just enjoy. Now obviously this is piping hot, but I burned myself before. Mm. Okay. For people that think parsley has no flavor, when you put it brush like that, you get a head of parsley and it's beautiful. So what I love about this, there's the perfect ratio of creamy without being too rich. It's not just like you're eating a cream. It has a little bit of that milk in that broth that works together perfectly. It has wonderful pieces of potato. The sausage, pick a good quality sausage. That's gonna be one that has more flavor. So if you can find a local one or a house made one, that's gonna be delicious. The pieces of corn. The celery is that wonderful underlying note with the onion that does not come in your face, but just is enjoyable and rounds out to make a beautiful, perfect soup. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you get excited and enticed to try something new. Maybe you haven't made this at home. Maybe you usually only go somewhere else. Maybe you use something from a can. This is something you can make on your stovetop with me. We can make it together. Get the recipe from my website, wiseguide.com. Print it off and use it. Share this around so other people can do it too. This is gonna make you maybe not mind winter quite so much. Enjoy.